Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, enabled by digital technologies. Our meeting date is Monday, April 25th, 2022. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. We all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel. It will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream and the archive. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors, staff, and delegations who will participate in this meeting. At this time, I invite your decorum. I advise that I have attendance regrets tonight from Councillor Richardson. Today marks the beginning of National Volunteer Week, and it comes in North Perth with at least two opportunities, but I'll focus on two. First, let me express deep gratitude and respect to the many, many residents of North Perth who engage in volunteerism in our community. Through your efforts, much is done to make North Perth a wonderful place to live. And so much of that effort is hidden from our view or not much seen. There are so many ways that so many volunteer in our community across the lifespan to support individuals and groups in health, social services, arts, sport, the creation of community, and so much more. I am so impressed with the ongoing commitment of volunteers, and so on behalf of Council, I say thank you to our volunteers tonight with hopes that the glow of appreciation spans the year and sparks the spirits of all in our community. I will make the obvious call to action. Carry on. Second, this is the council meeting during which we announce those in our community who are to be recognized by name by their council for their contributions to volunteerism. Tonight, we will present two Celebrate North Perth Inspiration Awards, recognizing individuals who have inspired others through their outstanding accomplishment or service to the community within the preceding year. Citizens who have stoked inspiration in our community were nominated by other citizens who took note of their commitment and involvement in meaningful ways in 2021. It is my pleasure to announce that the first of two recipients of a Celebrate North Perth Inspiration Award for 2021 is Dr. Lisa Trajnar. I'll read a little bit about Dr. Trajnar so that she is made more familiar in our community. From the nomination, this is what we learned. Dr. Lisa Trajnar has been the key driver and workhorse behind Listowel's successful COVID-19 vaccination strategy. When the various COVID vaccines became available, there was a huge interest from the population, including thousands in North Perth, to get the shots. Most vaccination clinics established by the Huron Perth Health Unit were unfortunately, mainly located in Goderich and Stratford, leaving many in the Listowel area reliant on time off work and travel, which again, unfortunately, was extremely difficult for a large proportion of our population. As well, the logistics behind setting up vaccine clinic clinics were more complex than the typical flu clinic setup, which uh, we are used to hosting in Listowel due to the cold storage, vial sizes, and shelf life of the various products and the usage accounting that was required. Immediately upon the vaccine approvals by Health Canada, 
Dr. Trajnar spent hours learning the details and began connecting with the key distribution players in Stratford to ensure a listable supply. With determination, she then began not only organizing North Perth located mini mass clinics at Parkview Gardens, but reached to ensure the vulnerable community had the option of vaccination. She ran workplace clinics, gave shots in the parking lot, provided vaccine to the hospital, vaccinated the homebound with house calls, ran retirement home and community living North Perth clinics, and ran pediatric vaccine clinics on her own when pediatric dosing was available. To be sure, there was a group effort here. The community rallied with volunteers, free space, Parkview Gardens, nursing, both current and retired, and administrative and physician support. But Dr. Trajnar was at the center of it all. And our 3,000 given doses uh, would have been far less without her passion and commitment. In fact, the health unit remarked that the Listo Clinic was the only one to keep on ordering vaccines and that we had the best pediatric coverage in the North Perth and Perth County area. One wonders, given that Dr. Trajnar was responsible for intubating and putting the sickest local COVID patients on ventilators as an anesthetist at the hospital, if she has a unique perspective on the value of vaccination. And while there was some compensation for her work, the lion's share of it was provided off the side of her desk. Dr. Trajnar really went above and beyond in the vaccination effort, and it feels right that the community would celebrate this. And now, a little bit of biographical information about Dr. Trajnar. Lisa Trajnar grew up in Grimsby, Ontario, where she attended Our Lady of Fatima and then Blessed Trinity Secondary School. She then went to the University of Toronto for an undergraduate degree in toxicology. After university, she completed medical school at the Schulich School of Medicine at Western University. It is there that she met her future husband, Derek Gateman, who is also a physician in Listowel. With her husband, she did a family medicine residency at the McMaster Grand Erie Six Nations site in Brentford. She also did an additional year of training in anesthesia at Queen's University. Her husband, Derek, has trained as a medical student in Wingham, uh, so that made both familiar with the area, and Listwell was hiring for anesthesia at the time, so this dynamic duo ended up moving to a great benefit to our community. We now both work here with Eric having a family medicine practice and Lisa doing anesthesia and emergency department coverage. The COVID-19 the COVID sorry the COVID-19 vaccine project started when Lisa was re redeployed to the Crescent Care outbreak in 2021 and became familiar with the vaccine. The initiative grew exponentially from there trying to help protect the most vulnerable from terrible disease. Outside of work Lisa reports that she is busy just chasing around her two beloved sons, Henry, who is four, and Edward, who is just about two years old. Again, to our community, it's my pleasure to introduce a 2021 Celebrate North Perth Inspiration Award recipient, Dr. Lisa Trochnar. Dr. Trochnar, accept the appreciation of your council, and here's an opportunity for a few words. Oh, thank you very much. That's uh, very kind, and thank you to uh, the council for uh, recognizing the uh, the effort of our team. And I wish I could have them all here because it really, uh, really was quite a team effort. And uh, you know, uh, some people might have been on the uh, HPM vac meetings, and I probably had the worst attendance uh, at those meetings. So uh, you know, I, I thankful for the uh, North Perth municipality as well, and for. Uh, all the hard work everyone did in getting those mass vaccine clinics to our community. Um, uh, I, as uh, you mentioned, I, I did start doing the vaccines as part of the um, uh, the Crescent Care outbreak, and I, I really found it quite remarkable. You know, the outbreak was quite terrible, and uh, we had a 80% mortality rate um, from COVID-19 in that outbreak. Um, and then, uh, you know, they've had subsequent outbreaks with, you know, one or two percent. So um, 
you know, I, I realize in the subsequent months and years uh, since January 2021, the vaccine has become a bit more controversial, perhaps. But, uh, you know, I uh, outside of the politics of it, I do think from a medicine standpoint, the benefits of it are really quite remarkable. Um, and certainly as the uh, uh, as the anesthetist who has um, intubated the patients with COVID-19, uh, it, it is really quite uh, remarkable, the benefit. So um, I was just grateful that, you know, I had an excellent team, especially, um, uh, you know, Stephanie Gratton, who was, uh, I think, the one who actually put me up for the award, but she was really quite instrumental in helping me to uh, uh, get a, a team organized as well, uh, Tanya Diamond and Becky Smith at the clinic, and then uh, Marie and Donna at the Huron Perth Health Unit um, supplied us with our vaccine, and we're very patient with my terrible computer uh, work that I did uh, during that time. Um, and then, of course, a big thanks to my family. Uh, poor uh, Derek was a full-time doctor and a full-time dad a lot during those um, hours that uh, that I'd be pulling all-nighters or um, be doing really, uh, you know, miss a lot of dinner times and stuff, um, trying to cobble together the vaccine um, effort. So, you know, it really was a team effort, and I'm I'm very grateful and wish I could uh, include everybody in, in the accolades. But uh, thank you very much to the council. Thank you, Dr. Trajnar. You're, as you heard, an inspiration to others in the work that you've done. And, and uh, this council is uh, quick to appreciate that. To me. At this time, I'd like to call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to introduce us to the second of our two recipients of the Celebrate North Perth Inspiration Award for 2021. Deputy Mayor Kellum. Yes, uh, thank you, Mason, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, and through you, uh, it, it is a pleasure to read uh, the letter for our second award winner for the uh, uh, Celebrate North Perth uh, Inspiration Award. The award goes to Abadell. She is a very talented individual who always seeks scope of improvement. She is always kind to everyone and is always there to help anyone with kindness, love, and honesty. She should be recognized because she is an inspiration to young members of our community. Abba is one of a kind. She is a homemaker, a local business owner in town. She is on the board of directors of the North Perth Chamber of Commerce, and she is a registered financial advisor. Yet, she is more than happy to help each and every other with her passion of spreading the love and kindness. She is a newcomer to Canada, and she has made a place in the community such that she is loved and highly respected by everyone. With all the lows and highs of recent times, she has managed to continue to achieve business excellence for the past two years, remaining the most kind and compassionate human being one can ever come across. She agreed, she agreed to... Mayor Callum, I think we've lost your video feed. It keeps going on and off. Uh, someone was in there, and I apologize. Can you just uh, go back to where I was, Mayor Todd? Thank you. Uh, I think um, uh, you were, you had just finished a sentence about uh, being a newcomer to Canada. And... Okay, thank you very much. And she has made a place in the community such that she is loved and highly respected by everyone. With all the lows and highs of recent times, she has managed to continue to achieve business excellence for the past two years, remaining the most kind, compassionate human being one can ever come across. She agreed to serve on two municipal initiatives in the last year. The first, a roundtable consultation among the long-term environment and opportunities in the community convened by the mayor and the second, a discussion group about welcoming newcomers and building diversity in North Perth. Now, here's a little bit about Abba. Abadell lives in Listowel with her husband, Gaurav, and two beautiful kids, Manya and Otov. Her family moved to Canada in December 2011 from England. Originally, Abba, originally Abba is from India. She was born in Bhopal, MP, Otelier family. Being an only child of her parents, she received immense love, 
affection and care from them. And she advises that she can never describe in words the values they taught her, which helped her to become what she is today. She did most of her schooling and secondary education in India. This includes her master's degree in education and sociology. She secured a financial advisor license in Canada in 2022. Apa started her life in Canada as a homemaker and her life revolves around her family. Her hobbies include reading, traveling, and spending good time with her friends. She started a business, Listowel Physiotherapy and AG Physiotherapy, with her husband's support in 2018, and now enjoys working over there in her free time from her family. On occasion, Apa does some voluntary work in the community, and she sits on the board of directors for the North Perth Chamber of Commerce. Abba says she always follows her heart and believes in herself. She loves to help others and believes we get what we give and we treat others you like to be treated. Congratulations to Abba Dell, one of the two winners of the 2021 North Perth Inspiration Awards. And I'll turn it back to you, Mayor Todd. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Kellum, and uh, my congratulations to Abba. And Abba, we would love to hear from you if you'd like to say a few words. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for the award and all the support. I would like to start um, just with Mayor Todd to begin with. Uh, I met him uh, just as any other immigrant, and I had a few discussions and few uh, deliberations. And I was like, you know, we can do something for the immigrants. And to his knowledge and every aspect he wanted to discuss and he wanted to do so much for us. Us, I mean immigrants, but I don't consider myself anymore an immigrant because I've, I've received, I think, immense love and respect. And um, I never treated myself as one because I've always been loved as, uh, as their own from everybody. And um, he had been a great support, definitely. And everybody in the community, when we had, um, we still are going through uh, COVID, uh, like, you know, hardships. And during that, the business had uh, ups and downs, every business had. And so I was not an exceptional, but uh, I can never forget how much support the people gave me. And I think that was a true uh, test, you know, for everybody that how much you trust in me and I trust in you. And I think they stood by us through thick and thin. So, um, I would like to thank each and everybody of you sitting at the council uh, on the boards for us and helping us you know, find our ways through and uh, becoming who we are today. And I would especially like to thank my husband, Gaurav, and my kids, because uh, if it was not for my husband, Gaurav, I would never have been able to do a business and spend that time knowing his schedule was busy, but he always wanted me to do something. And I think if he, if he would not have supported or pushed me, I would have never been able to do that. So my huge thank you to each and everybody of you and especially to all the uh, people who have uh, who thought that I was uh, even close to deserving this award, but it means a lot to me and I'm really sure and I am pretty confident it will it'll help me to be a better human being knowing that people do trust in me. And I really hope to uh, serve you all nothing but with the best. So thank you so much once again for um, having me on this meeting and uh, just uh, honoring me with the Inspiration Award. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much, Ava, and my heartiest congratulations. It's been a pleasure personally to work with you in the community over the last few years, off and on, and uh, I look forward to it continuing. Um, thank you very much. That's a... Uh, that's a very um, obvious uh, request uh, of all of our volunteers is to carry on. Thank you very much, Mayor Todd. I appreciate it. Next, it's my great pleasure, and I too have been a participant in the wonderful work they do in our community to recognize as the 2021 winners of the Norm Sterling Citizen of the Year Award, Ray and Diane Homewood. This award is the highest bestowed on a volunteer or volunteers by the Council of the Municipality of North Perth in a given year. 
I'll read first some comments from the nominator. Diane and Ray Homewood are amazing examples of what it means to support the community in which you live. They consider volunteering a part of their regular schedule and daily life. In addition to all the good work they have done, and it is substantial, they are amazing neighbors and the most dedicated parents and grandparents. We are so very thankful to have them in our lives and our community is blessed to have them as seen by their countless examples of generosity. There are no others more deserving of this recognition than Ray and Diane Homewood. It's my pleasure to take a few moments to itemize their long history of community involvement. And it actually takes a little bit, of uh, there's quite a bit here. Diane and Ray have served as volunteer coordinators for the Community Salvation Army Kettle Drive each year for a number of years. This effort raises funds for the Salvation Army Family Services that provide local families in need. As well, Diane sits on the Family Services Advisory Council. Ray and Diane have been valuable volunteers in our area's COVID vaccine clinics. They have volunteered at over 35 such clinics in Perth County during the pandemic. Diane and Ray spend one morning a week sorting, stocking, and managing inventory at the North Perth Food Bank. Ray and uh, Diane also deliver Meals on Wheels. Diane and Ray volunteer with the Salvation Army Family Services Wednesday evening program called Hope Eats that provides over 135 hot meals each week to those who are in need. Their love of travel is shared. Ray and Diane blog with local schools to make the worlds of the students here just a little bit bigger. Their uh, posts, uh, which have been somewhat limited by COVID, of course, are often the favorite part of their travel journeys. And through Family Services, Ray helps deliver a food prep and nutrition program called Food Explorers to students in the junior grades. It is also my pleasure to share a little bit of biographical information about Ray and Diane Homewood. Ray was born in India and raised there until his early teens. Diane was a West Coast girl. Both of their parents chose a life of service with the Salvation Army. Heart to God, hand to man was a philo family philosophy. Ray and Diane had been married over 40 years. They raised six kids, five boys and one girl, and our Nana and Papa to three grandchildren who they say, or what they say is the best gig ever. Diane graduated with a Bachelor of Math degree from University of Waterloo and has a Bachelor's and Master's in Education from Western University. Ray has a Medical Radiation Technology Certification from Fanshawe College and a Bachelor's of Science degree and a Bachelor of Education degree from Western University. They relocated uh, to North Perth in the fall of 1983. Diane was a long serving educator in our community at LDSS and retired from the position of principal in 2014. Ray worked for 11 years at University Hospital in London, then became a grade school teacher in Mornington, Eastdale and Central Schools in our area until his retirement in 2014. Ray and Diane embraced the concept of lifelong learning. Since retirement, Ray has taken up scuba diving and Diane has started painting. Both love adventures. Their tracking app says that they've seen, only seen 16% of the world only. That's what's in the notes, only seen 16% of the world and the Homewoods report that they are taking that as a challenge. Having brushed shoulders with them and volunteering in this community, it is a wonderful yes moment for me personally to extend this community's appreciation for all of their service and to encourage them as I've been so far tonight to carry on. Our 2021 Norm Sterling Citizen of the Year Award recipients, Diane and Ray Homewood. And some remarks would be welcome at this time, Diane and Ray. Uh, Council, on behalf of Diane and I, I want to say a big thank you. When we appreciate the many, many individuals, organizations, and service groups that serve North Perth, we are humbled to be recognized for our own tiny contributions. 
Recently, on a trip to North uh, Mexico, we were introduced to the Tarahumara people. Their life philosophy is to walk well. And as we attempt to adopt this philosophy in our own small and flawed way, we appreciate everyone that provides us an opportunity to serve in North Perth. Once again, Council, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all of your service to all of our recipients this evening. Again, a great appreciation for your efforts and may you continue to inspire us. Uh, we are grateful uh, for all that you do and for the example that you set in our community. Um, just a few words. I think it's important actually for context. Um, it's important to sort of remind people what the Norm Sterling Award is about. And uh, so I'll read a few comments about that as well. Uh, this award has a, a history uh, extending beyond 40 years now and has been given to residents who have made significant contributions to the welfare and betterment of our community. The award, the award was established in honor of Norm Sterling. Norm was a forestry foreman with Ontario Hydro who put forth great effort to save farmland when the Hydro Line corridor was being proposed. Norm was one of the heroes of the Lisbon Memorial Arena collapse in 1959. In the split second that the roof was falling in, Coach Sterling grabbed and carried two players off the ice and took cover at the north side boards. All three survived. In 1966, he was awarded the President's Medal by the National Safety Council for saving a man's life, who was overcome by carbon monoxide. Norm also served on the school board in the town of Listwell and was chairman of the Listwell Memorial Hospital Board at the time of his death in 1973 at the age of 46. Wallace Township set up a memorial award in his honor. The tradition of the annual awarding of an outstanding resident for their achievements and contributions has been carried on in North Perth since amalgamation in 1998. It is indeed a significant award named after a significant citizen of our community and those who join its ranks are truly treasured. Again, thank you to all of our recipients and uh, to the, the Homewoods as our recipients this year of the Norm Sterling Award. The best part of being mayor is recognizing the successes and accomplishments in your community. And so it is a night uh, with true heart glow for all that uh, we've seen and, and heard so far. Um, let's move on to the regular part of our agenda. Uh, let's tackle first item 3.1 uh, pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have so declared and being ready to verbally advise the chair in public session. And if not already done, to submit documentation uh, to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Let's begin tonight with Councillor Anstett. Welcome, Councillor Anstett. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. This evening through you, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, the accounts, specifically the daycare, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Anstead. I'll point out that we, we have a slight change in the numbering of items tonight. And so I think we'll just slide your declaration to 6.1. And I believe the confirmatory is then 14.1. Is that right? 6.5.1, sorry. Okay, thank you. And 14.1, thank you. All right, um, Councillor Behrens is next. Welcome, Councillor Behrens. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I will declare a conflict of interest on five, sorry, my apologies, 6.5.1 and 14.1 as I have grandchildren attending our daycare and after school programming. Thank you. Thank you and Deputy Mayor Kellum. 
Thank you. And through you, Mayor Harrisonburg, uh, I'd like to give uh, pecuniary interest on item 6.5.1 as well on the accounts, uh, specifically to the daycare as my two grandchildren attended and also Perth Meadows as my mother and father-in-law are tenants. And then with uh, the confirmatory bylaw 14.1. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any others uh, that we're not aware of uh, ahead of the meeting may so declare at this point or at any point in the meeting. Anyone else? Okay, we're not seeing any, so we'll move forward. To explain our virtual processes, I will be systematically trying to seek consent from the various councillors as movers and seconders of the real solutions and bylaws will be put before us tonight. I'll do this to some degree alphabetically should a councillor not wish to respond to the request they may say so, and I'll move on to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight, maintaining a speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. We will follow speaking order carefully, and any councillor wishing to have yet another say will indicate again and go to the bottom of the speaker's list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors, you are asked to maintain a generally a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If when I do so recognize I don't hear you because you are muted or having some technical difficulty, I will advise. Should technical difficulty be the cause, support will be coming your way from our IT team, Fulton is on tonight. And I will, after a reasonable pause, call on our next speaker coming back to you when you are available. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, and then return to mute. Uh, let's then turn to item 3.2 of our agenda. I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows. The agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Let's start with Councillor Rothwell tonight. Councillor Rothwell, welcome. Will you serve as mover for that? Thank you, Mayor Todd. And, and uh, yes, I will be pleased to move that. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, welcome. Will you serve as our seconder for that? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Bye. All right. So we have it duly moved and seconded. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none. Let's have that vote. And Colton's still working on my uh, e-scribe, Mayor Todd. I'll let you know when it's completed. Okay, so what say you, uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum? I'm in favor. Thank you. And we're missing one other. I'm in favor as well, Councillor Rothwell. Okay, thank you. With that, we have the uh, the entirety accounted for, so that is carried. Thank you. Uh, let's move uh, next to item uh, four of our agenda. This is the consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they're believed to be not contentious, yet they require council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councilor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are only two items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a des any desire to extract one or the other or both of these items for discussion or action? We're not seeing anything, so I have a resolution recommended to us that consent items 4.1 and 4.2 be received for information and the minutes of the April 11th, 2022 regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Andreessen, welcome tonight. Will you serve as our mover here? Good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yes, um, I will uh, make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Anstead, uh, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And so, Deputy Mayor Kellum, we're still waiting on your, your technology fix. What say you on this one? I am in favor. Thank you. 
Thank you. And so with that, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, let's move forward then to agenda item number five. Um, and uh, at this time it is proposed that uh, we have a public meeting on a land planning matter that has been included in our agenda tonight. Uh, to have a public meeting, we must temporarily recess from council. I have a resolution that will enable us to do so. The resolution reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.36 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the following. Application for zoning bylaw amendment by Burlett Farms affecting property described as Lot 16, Concession 4, 5525, Line 88, Wallace Ward. Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I will move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Duncan, first, welcome. And uh, will you serve as our seconder for this one? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, what say you? Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you. And with that, that is carried. Let me find the right paperwork here. Oh, okay. so we don't have a summary of uh, the procedure, but I might have something in my desk that can help me to that end. So uh, this is a uh, public meeting under the Planning Act. And uh, at this time, uh, we will, uh, this is a statutory public meeting that uh, will consider a planning matter. Uh, the um, opportunity here for us is to have uh, this for, sorry, I'm, I'm scrambling a little bit here, um, for a zoning bylaw amendment. As you heard, the purpose is to uh, have this with regards to a property in Wallace Ward. And I believe at this time that uh, it's important to note that uh, those who are in attendance uh, can be heard by this council in the public meeting, as well uh, those uh, who wish to receive notification about the outcomes or results of this public meeting can um, receive those as long as they have uh, registered with the clerk. Uh, information is available, I think, by phone or by email. And, um, and so we'll proceed from there with the public meeting. At this time, um, I believe that uh, uh, only those who uh, wish to appeal an action of council that's taken as a result of this uh, meeting and council's decision must have participated, either uh, have made a written submission or made a submission in this public meeting. Um, certainly, at this time, then, uh, the opportunity is to hear from the planner about this uh, project, and I will therefore call on our planner who's attending tonight, and that is Susanna Reed from the County of Perth. Uh, welcome, Ms. Reed. Thank you very much, Mayor Kassenberg. Shall I proceed with my comments? Uh, please do. Please do. All right, thank you. So this is, as uh, the mayor has mentioned, this is a public meeting held under the Planning Act to consider a zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, the zoning bylaw amendment is for a property owned by Burlett Farms. And uh, with your permission, I'll just share my screen and show you a few slides. Yeah. Would I be able to share? Can I share? Does she have access to share? Very I good. So. Access now. I think I'm sharing now. Is that right? I can see it. Yeah. Okay, great. So this is the location of the subject property. It's owned by Burlett Farms. Um, as the mayor has mentioned, it's uh, lot 16 concession four in the Wallace Ward, uh, immediately east of Gallenstown. The application is a rezoning for a surplus farm resident severance application. And council considered that application for surplus farm resident severance on November 5th of 2021. The file number is B33 of 21. 
Um, and this is the severance sketch as provided by the applicant on the right side of the screen. Um, so the, the uh, Burlet Farms uh, property is approximately 100 acres prior to the surplus farm resident severance. Um, the surplus farm resident severance uh, has been conditionally approved to permit a 1.5 acre severed lot um, along with an easement for a hydro line over the retained parcel. So the retained parcel is, is shown on this, on this around the uh, surplus farm re resident severance, and that property is approximately 98.6 acres. The air photo on the left uh, shows the same information um, over top of an air photo. So the yellow line outlines the surplus farm resident severance, and the red line out outlines the um, uh, retained parcel. Again, uh, FAL 3321 has been conditionally approved. So one of the conditions of this of the surplus farm resident severance application is to rezone both the severed and the retained parcels. The severed parcel is being rezoned from agricultural to an A-1 uh, special zone, an A-1 sub-9 sub to permit a non-farm residence in an agricultural area with a reduced lot frontage. So the zoning bylaw requires that the lot frontage of an A-1 zone be 30 meters, and in this case, it's 17 meters, so a special zone is required. <laughs> the retained land is being rezoned to an A from agricultural A to A-62 to restrict the construction of a residence on the farmland. Um, and just some photos uh, standing on line 88, looking south at the residence. Uh, you can see at, at the, it's at the end of a laneway, and um, this is the hydro line um, that is part of the easement. And here is the mapping. It's a little bit hard to see the symbology on this map, but the um, severed parcel, as I mentioned, is being zoned to, from A to A-1, subscript 9, and the retained land is being zoned uh, A-62. The application conforms with the um, provincial policy statement and the County of Perth official plan and the planning department is recommending that the application for rezoning be approved. Uh, thank you, Ms. Reed. If at this time you would uh, please uh, provide advice about the uh, notice to public of this public meeting and uh, related reports that uh, have been generated or concerns expressed from those who were consulted uh, and who have provided written input. Certainly. The notice of public meeting was given in accordance of the Planning Act on uh, April 4th, 2022. Uh, um, at the time of preparing the report, there have been no comments. There were no comments received. And I did receive a call from the uh, owners of the property who indicated that they would be in, in attendance today. I had a conversation or email exchange with the clerk today, and my understanding is that there were no further correspondence received. Uh, thank you, Ms. Reed. I'm just going to redirect to the clerk uh, in the chamber. Can you confirm you've received no additional correspondence? Okay, so the clerk is nodding her head that indeed we've received no additional correspondence uh, pertaining to this file that should be uh, brought into this public meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, opportunity now exists for those who wish to make uh, comments uh, and who have the purpose of making comments to do so. Uh, first, uh, those in favor of this other than the recipient or the applicant. Um, Clerk Klein, have we had any registration to that effect? We have, we have not. Um, uh, second, those who are opposed to this application, uh, have we received any indication of such from any member of the public at this time? We have not, according to the clerk. Uh, at this time, there is the opportunity for the applicant or the applicant's agent to address counsel, should that be wished. Is there any desire from the applicant or the applicant's agent to address counsel on this matter? If there is, take yourself off mute. Okay, we're not uh, seeing any evidence of that at that point. Uh, so finally, uh, that brings us to the opportunity for counsel to offer comments or to ask questions pertaining to this application. Uh, counsel, are there any questions? We see anything, Clerk Klein? 
So we're not seeing any indication or, or uh, expression of interest in asking questions or making comments by council at this time. Uh, that uh, means that we can move forward. I'll read the statutory notice. Notice of the decision of council will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal uh, in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And with that, uh, we can bring this public meeting to a close with a little bit of uh, formal resolution here. So I have a resolution for, for our consideration council uh, at this time that the public meeting for the purposes of a Planning Act application is now adjourned at 7.46 p.m. and the council reconvene into regular open council. Um, Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, welcome tonight. Will you serve as seconder for that? Yes, I would certainly second that. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate on this one? Let's have that vote. And Deputy Mary Callum, I'm assuming that the problems continue. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. No what do you? Yes, I'm in favor. We're still working on it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And with that, that is carried. Thank you. That means we are back in open session of council. Uh, further to the application then, council, we have a few matters to, uh, to consider. Uh, I have a uh, resolution and a bylaw amendment here as follows. First, uh, the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approved the application for a zoning bylaw amendment affecting property described as Lot 16, Concession 4, 5525, Line 88, in the Wallace Ward of the Municipality of North Perth. Uh, can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for this? Yes, I so move. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, will you be the seconder on this one? Yes, I'll gladly second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you, Deputy McCallum. And with that, that brings us to total votes cast of nine, and it is carried. Thank you. Uh, next up then is the uh, bylaw amendment here uh, through bylaw bylaw that bylaw 35-2022 being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 6 b 1999 as amended be introduced read and considered read a first second and third time and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation can i call on Councillor andreessen to be our mover for this one yes i'll make that motion thank you Thank you. Councillor Anstett, will you be our seconder here? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you. And so we have <clears throat> nine votes cast there, and that is carried. Thank you. Uh, next up then is uh, we turn our attention to uh, agenda item number six, which is reports from departments and uh, key staff and item 6.1.1. We have a, a recommended resolution uh, to effect changes to the municipality's COVID-19 vaccination policy. Uh, before I call on Mary Emma Lippert, who is uh, going to present this report on behalf of the human resources team. It is my pleasure to announce and introduce to council uh, Kelly Fraser, who uh, has accepted the position of human resources team lead. Uh, Kelly's first day of work was uh, April 19th, so a week ago. And Kelly is joining North Perth from the Hayashi Canada organization where for the past nine years, she progressively ascended to the role of HR manager responsible for developing internal strategies, and programs, performance management, health and safety and recruiting. Kelly has a bachelor's degree in psychology and minor in business as well as postgraduate human resources designation 
and after recently writing the employment law exam, sounds fun, is working towards achieving her CHRL designation. Well, we're grateful that Kelly has joined our team. Kelly, if you can just turn your camera on, if you're with us and wave a little bit, that would be helpful so the council can see you. And there is Kelly. And uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting with her and um, I'm sure that the rest of council will make themselves known to you in due course as uh, they come into the building and say hello. Um, so uh, welcome Kelly and uh, now over to Mary Emma. Mary Emma, you, the floor is yours. Good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg and council. Um, tonight we're bringing forward a revision, a revision to the scope of our current vaccination policy. Um, we are proposing volunteers, committee members, and contractors be removed from, from the scope. Um, in February 2022, the province of Ontario announced the elimination of vaccine passport requirements, effective March 1st. Staff are therefore no longer collecting this information from visitors um, to municipal facilities. Since then, the Ministry of Education has also resumed school use for programming um, with community groups, clubs, and extracurricular activities. Um, these user groups are not required to provide proof of vaccination status, which has um, created some confusion as the municipality also uses some of these spaces. Um, going forward, if passed, um, all other sections of the policy would remain as is. Um, however, it would only cover staff and council. Um, aligning North Perth uh, our North Perth's policy, sorry, um, with the current provincial guidelines, as well as the Ministry of Education's uh, COVID-19 health safety and operational guidelines for schools. Um, we just feel um, right now it's, it's really limiting us with volunteers, uh, especially with a lot of the upcoming events and programs for this summer, um, with um, limited capacity to collect some of this information, and with some of the guidelines being dropped, that it would be um, extremely beneficial if if council were to approve that change, um, eliminating, um, like I said, volunteers, committee members, um, and contractors from the scope of the policy. Um, I welcome any questions, if anyone has any at this time. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lippert. Uh, council, questions, first comments? Okay, we're not seeing any expression of interest in that. So I have a resolution uh, has been proposed by staff for our consideration. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth approved the amendments to the COVID-19 vaccination policy scope with an effective date of April 26th, 2022. Councillor Behrens, will you serve as mover for this one? Oh, okay. Um, shall we take Councillor Anstead's question first then? Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and I apologize, uh, Miriam, if I missed it. Um, was this approved through the HR committee? No, it was not. Um, I have discussed it with um, CEO Snell as well as a, a multiple members of our management team, um, specifically our programs department, as they see and and um, um, I was going to say employee, but they they um, encourage a lot of volunteer work um, with a lot of their programming. So I've, I've definitely discussed it with them, but not the HR committee, no. Okay, thank you very much. And welcome, Kelly. All right. Um, let me read that resolution again that we have for us, unless there are other questions at this time. Um, the resolution reads as follows. That the Council of the Municipal of North Perth approved the amendments to the COVID-19 vaccination policy scope with an effective date of April 26, 2022. Councillor Barron's gonna call on you to be our mover for this one. Yes, I will move that motion, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Okay, we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Kellum. And so with that, uh, that is carried. Uh, thank you, Mary, Emma, and uh, welcome Kelly again to the team. We're glad to have you with us. Let's uh, move on to item 6.2, reports from the clerk's department. Item 6.2.1, the clerk has provided council with some background on the need for updating the municipality's animal control bylaw 
With the recommendation, the staff be given direction to undertake a review and bring forward a report in Q3 of this year. I'll call on uh, Clerk Klein to introduce your report and answer questions. Ms. Klein, let me just set things so that we don't create a black hole here in the AV settings, and uh, then you'll, you'll be on. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and to you and members of Council. Um, so towards the end of 2019, the municipality transitioned its animal control service provider to the Humane Society of Kitchener, Waterloo, and Stratford, Perth. And as part of this transition, the process for issuing dog licenses was updated. And in 2021, the municipality moved to a generic dog tag system with no year on the tag. We send out invoices annually with a payment due date of February 28th, after which fees will double. Previously, dog license renewals were due by April 30th every year. So there has been a little bit of confusion within the community about our updated process for issuing dog tags and specifically with respect to the payment due date. While a letter was mailed out um, with the invoices for 2022 advising of our new process, we've still received um, quite a few calls and questions from residents. And after looking into it further, staff have realized that there is some conflicting information between our updated process and the animal control bylaw which was enacted in 2014 and hasn't been updated since. While the fees and license bylaw was updated to reflect the new February 28th payment due date, the animal control bylaw still has the April 30th date in it. So upon recognizing this discrepancy, staff are honoring the April 30th date for dog tags for 2022. And we've also reversed any doubling of fees that residents may have been charged um, for missing the February 28th payment date. So staff wanted to bring this report forward for transparency and to acknowledge that we need to fix this discrepancy in information. Um, therefore, staff are recommending a review of our animal control bylaw to ensure internal processes regarding the issuance of dog licenses are aligned with provisions in the bylaw, as well as to reflect um, the Humane Society as our new provider of animal control services in North Perth. Um, so the recommendation before you tonight is that staff be directed to undertake a review and update of the animal control bylaw to be completed by the end of Q3 2022. Thanks, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Clerk Klein. I see Councillor Seiler is up first. Councillor Seiler. Thank you for the report there, Lindsay. I just have uh, kind of having a dealing with a dog issue in town here. Is there any stipulation on how many dogs you're allowed in a, in a dwelling in, in the municipal listable? Well, so I'm just pulling up our bylaw now. So if you just give me a moment, I know it does speak to that. Um, just give me a moment here. I believe it is two, but I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the correct information. Um, sorry, it's three. So as so the bylaw states, except as provided under the provisions for kennels, no owner or occupier of a premise shall keep more than three animals in said premises as regulated by the municipality of North Perth zoning bylaw. So it's three. Okay, thank you. Um, so, and, and just um, for Mayor Kaysenberg's uh, question, animal means any male or female dog in the municipality of North Perth. That's defined in the bylaw. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kirk Klein, for that. Uh, anyone else with the questions or first comments uh, on the proposed action here, which is to direct staff to bring forward uh, a review an update of the animal control bylaw. 
All right, let's uh, put the resolution then that has been recommended on the floor that staff be directed to undertake a review and update of the animal control bylaw to be completed by the end of Q3 2022. Uh, Deputy Mayor Callum, will you mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Johnston, will you serve as seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Okay, we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, what say you? Oh, what says he is? He's back home. Well, that's good. All we're right. trying. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's great. Congrats. We're glad to have you back. All right. Um, uh, thank you. That is Carrie. So uh, for item 6.2.2, Council is asked to receive a report on an application for consent to sever. It has the effect uh, of adding some land from a lot owned by the applicant, the Elliots, to an adjacent lot owned by the Elliots. This action relates to lots that front King and Queen Streets in Atwood. I'll call on County of Perth Planner Adam Kozlowski to explain the uh, request on this matter. Mr. Kozlowski, welcome. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, members of Council. Uh, I apologize, I'm using my home computer and my webcam has uh, decided to go on strike. Um, so I'll share a screen and walk Council through this application. And I trust Council can see the air photo and my cursor moving. Yes, okay. Yeah, we can. So as Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so application B0222 is in the community of Atwood. And the we're dealing with two properties here. This property with the house and the garage is 192 King Street. And the property over here in red, it actually extends to the edge here. And this is lot 175, which is a, a vacant lot. And about three quarters of the garage that functions as part of 192 King is actually encroaching over the lot line. And what the applicants have proposed is a boundary adjustment to basically fix this situation. So what we're looking at here is a conveyance of 217.4 square meters from lot 175. It would be added to lot 128 or otherwise known as 192 King Street, and it would correct that structure encroachment over the lot line. And as a result of this application, uh, this property at 192 King would be increased in size to uh, basically a quarter acre, 0.25 acres. And the retained lands would be 0.146 acres. And I have some photos here that are from Street View, but I've uh, cropped them in a little bit and marked them up just to walk council through the proposal. So this is looking east from uh, from the street, and this is the uh, this is the suspect garage here that's encroaching over the lot line. This smaller shed is going to be removed, and this is basically the retained parcel in the red dotted line here, uh, just to give council an idea of the size. And so this is the house uh, on the benefiting lot. This is the garage back here, just to show council some context. And just another view showing the garage that uh, currently is mainly on the uh, retained parcel. So the resulting retained land would be this in the uh, red dotted line. And again, it would cure that encroachment problem. Just looking at the stop. So staff recommend that Perth, uh, North Perth Council endorsed the application for approval uh, for the reasons that are outlined in the staff report and subject to the conditions of consent. I'd be happy to answer any questions Council may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kozlowski. Uh, council questions or first comments on this? Okay, we're not uh, seeing any. Um, Council, I have a resolution. Uh, I will spare you the reading of the phone book approach here and uh, read you the first part, acknowledging how many conditions there are. 
uh, the conditions are itemized in your agenda package. So uh, the resolution is as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever number B02-22, lot 175, plan 253, Elmont Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 192 King Street, Atwood, dated April 4th, 2022, for information. And that council recommends that the county land division committee or its designate approve the application for consent to sever number B02-22 described as lot 175 plan 253 Elma Ward municipality of North Perth 192 King Street Atwood subject to the following conditions for the county of Perth there are seven conditions for North Perth there are three standard conditions. And I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for this one. Yes, I'd be pleased to move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you for that. Next up, for item 6.2.3, Council is asked to make a recommendation to approve a surplus farm severance dwelling, which will be forwarded to Perth County's Land Division Committee or its designate for property owned by the Schneiders in Wallace Ward. I'll call on County of Perth Planner Adam Kozlowski again to explain this request. Mr. Kozlowski again, welcome. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, like the previous application, I will share a screen and walk Council briefly through the application. Application B0322 is for the property at 840 King Street. <clears throat> and this is just outside of Palmerston at the, at the uh, north end of uh, North Perth Township. The applicant currently has a home farm, which is at 5469 line 90. And this property and this resulting dwelling is surplus to their uh, consolidated farm operation. Uh, they're proposing to sever the lot here in yellow, and then the retained farm lot, uh, which is cash crop, would retain a large uh, agricultural equipment drive shed. So the severed lot would have an area of 1.33 acres, and it would have 118 feet of frontage on King Street. Uh, the retained farm lot would have an area of 89.7 acres and it would have 610 feet of broken frontage also on King Street. And just to show council an image. So this is the severed lot. It would basically go along the side of the driveway back behind the house, which would take in the garage. And then the other lot line would basically come down along the edge of the grass line here. So staff have reviewed the application against the applicable official plan of pol policies and to uh, recommend that North Perth Council endorse the application subject to the conditions that are outlined in the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions council may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, council, any questions or first comments on this matter? Okay, we're not seeing any at this point, but still an opportunity after we get the resolution on the floor. Uh, so I have a resolution for our consideration. Again, there's lots of conditions. I'll just itemize uh, them by counting, but they are in your, your council package. Uh, the resolution is as follows, that the council of the municipality of North Perth received the report entitled consent to sever surplus farm residence number B03-22, dated April 25th, 2022, affecting the lands described as part lot 17, Session 10, Wallace Ward, 840 King Street, for information. And the council recommends that the County of Perth Land Division Committee or its designate approve the application for consent to sever surplus farm residence number B03-22, subject to the following conditions. For the County of Perth, there are four. For North Perth, there are five conditions as documented in your package. Uh, Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Anstep, will you serve as our seconder here? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? 
Seeing none, let's have that vote. And we're missing, are we missing one? Yeah. Councillor Johnston. There we go. And that's in now. So we have all nine votes accounted for, and that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kozlowski, my understanding is this is your last, um, your last week or so of employment and therefore your last uh, approach to uh, this council. And on behalf of this council, I want to express appreciation for your service as an employee in the County of Perth Planning Department and the good work that you've done. Uh, we wish you the best in your next endeavors. Uh, thank you, Your Worship and members of council. And uh, my last um, my last appearance with uh, the North will be tomorrow at Committee of Adjustment as well. I have two applications. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. For item uh, 6.2.4, staff is requesting approval of an application for part lot control by Wagler Homes addressing ability to create individual lots of record in the housing development on South Third Avenue in the list will work. The approval of this recommendation would forward this item to Perth County Council or its designate for its approval. I believe I'm calling on County of Perth planner Susanna Reed to explain the request on this matter. Ms. Reed, welcome back. Thank you, Mayor Kastenberg. Would you like me to explain the application? Please proceed. All right, so I will share my screen again. Um, Okay, I think I've shared the screen now. Um, so this is uh, an application for exemption from part lot control. The applicant is Joseph Wagler. Um, the screen shows you the location of the subject property. It's on Salisbury Ave. Um, and it's between uh, Kiso Lane and Connors Drive. So this is the subject property. Um, and this is a drawing. Uh, that is provided by the applicant. It's actually um, not completely visible in the PowerPoint that I have here, but this drawing is also in the council package. Um, and the application for part lot control is to create a lot line here. So exemption from part lot control is um, an application that's available through section 50 sub seven of the Planning Act um, that that it would exempt lot 60 and 61 from part lot control um, through the subdivision provisions of the Planning Act and allow the applicant to create a lot line here. Um, so at the moment, there is there is a lot line here and through exempting the property from part lot control, um, the applicant would be able to register a, line, a lot line at the registry office in this location and then subsequently uh, receive a building permit to uh, build both of these units along uh, with a common law along the proposed new lot line. Um, the property is zoned residential in the uh, Listwell official plan and R4 in the North Perth zoning bylaw. I was at the property last Wednesday um, and this is what the site looks like now. Um, the As the lot conforms with the uh, North Perth zoning bylaw. Uh, the planning department is support, supportive of the application as submitted. Um, we are recommending that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the application and forward it to um, the County of Perth for approval. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Reed. Um, council questions or first comments on this matter at this time? Okay, we're not seeing any at this point, but opportunity lies ahead still. Uh, we have two uh, actions here, uh, legislative actions for consideration. First is uh, a resolution for approval that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the application by Joseph Wagler Holmes for the exemption of part lot control on lands described as lots 60 and 61 of plan 44M72 Salisbury Avenue in the list will award Municipality of North Perth. If the proposed bylaw is adopted, it shall be forwarded to the County of Perth for approval. 
I told you to serve as a mover for this one. <clears throat> Councillor Behrens? I'm sorry, um, I could not hear you. Uh, oh. Yes, I am in favor. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and uh, Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. All right, any discussion or debate? We're not seeing expression of interest in same, so let's call that vote. I'm in favor, Mayor Todd. My vote didn't come up. Councillor Rothwell here. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Rothwell. So with that vote, that is carried. And next we have the, the uh, bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw uh, that reads as follows, that bylaw number 47-2022 as amended, being a bylaw to exempt from part lock control, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third, and be finally passed, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for this? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? I'm not seeing evidence of that, so let's have that vote too. I'm in favor, Mayor Todd. My e-scribe's not back up yet. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. And with your vote, that is carried. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Ms. Reed, for uh, your service to Council at this point. Um, let's turn now to item 6.3, items uh, reports from the Programs Department. Uh, we have no reports coming from that department this evening, but uh, so much is gearing up as uh, spring uh, encroaches or tries to encroach anyway. Um, so we know that they're very busy. Uh, likewise, uh, item 6.4, we don't have reports from our facilities departments. Uh, I know that they're uh, working hard and taking care of lots of things as we gear towards spring. Um, let's turn next to item uh, 6.5, reports from our finance department. As item 6.5.1, finance staff has brought forward for council review the accounts as of this date, April 25th. 2022. This account listing represents expenditures for all municipal services, including Perth Meadows operations, but does not include the incoming revenues that offset these expenses. I'll note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves from consideration and voting. For those who are participating, are there any questions about this report for our staff? I'm not seeing any evidence of that, so let's uh, turn to the resolution that is proposed. It reads as follows. The following summary of accounts be received by Council for information. The total expenses are $984,217.89. Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I will. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder here? Yes, I will second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And I believe that's carried, exactly. Great, uh, thank you. And next up then, council is item 6.5.2. Council is asked to amend by bylaw the bylaw which provided for the construction of the Klein Municipal Drain. This bylaw amendment attaches final costs to the drain enablement bylaw. And I believe Ms. Hale, our Director of Finance and uh, Treasurer, is available uh, for any questions or comments on this matter. Um, Council, do you have any questions or comments uh, you'd like to make before we consider this? Are you seeing anything? All right, so I have a resolution as follows that bylaw 65 2022 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 63 
2019 for the construction of the Klein Municipal Dream be introduced, read, and considered, read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed and said by law, be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Jason, can I call you to serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Anstead, will you be our seconder here? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Next up then is item 6.5.3. Council is in receipt of a request for a loan to support a ratepayer and amortizing costs assessed to the party for the remediation of a drain in the Wallace Ward. Staff is uh, recommending, am I ahead of myself? Did I jump ahead? Yeah, this is the loan. Okay, you have staff, sorry, I thought I jumped ahead. Staff is recommending approval and debenture for this loan in the amount of $50,000. Uh, Ms. Hale, this is um, a little different in this term of council. We haven't seen one of these before. So if you wanted to offer just a few general comments, that would be helpful. Certainly. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. We haven't seen a tile drain to bench application for some time. Upon council's consideration and approval, uh, this application continues on to the province uh, for final approval and that uh, this would be debentured via the tax bill. We just act as the conduit uh, for the farmer to borrow funds from the province of Ontario for tile drainage purposes. And tonight we have a, a, a motion for your consideration uh, to approve this application. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hale. Any questions or comments from council? We have two resolutions that sort of line up with this item, so I'll, I'll work our way through this. Um, the first is that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approved the application for loan under the Tile Grange Act for $50,000 pertaining to Perth Line 93, Concession 13 uh, North Park Lot 1N, Park Lot 2, Wallace Ward, conditional unavailability of provincial funding. Uh, Councillor Behrens, would you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I would make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. And then there's part two, which is a bylaw. Uh, reads as follows that bylaw 64 2022 being a bylaw to impose special annual drainage rates upon land in respect of which money is borrowed under the Tile Drainage Act be introduced, read, and considered read at first, second, and third time and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover on this one. Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? I'm not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Um, Ms. Hale, thank you for your attendance tonight. Uh, let's move forward then to item 6.6. .6. We have two reports from our environmental services department tonight. Uh, the first item 6.6.1 .6 invites council to receive the DWQMS infrastructure report and associated minutes for information. I'm gonna call on Mark Hackett, our manager of environmental services to address this item. Mr. Hackett, welcome. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and council. Um, this report and the next report that I have are both require are requirements of the drinking water quality management standard. So council has seen these each year for the last number of years. Um, the infra infrastructure review um, included all senior management and waterworks staff, uh, where we meet on an annual basis to discuss things such as the infrastructure components, uh, including well system buildings, 
treatment process equipment, distribution system elements, and system hardware and software. And we use this time to develop priority needs. Um, we review previous infrastructure reviews, water audits. Uh, we look at water, water work staff recommendations, Ministry of Environment, Conservation, and Park inspection reports, and maintenance records during this review. Um, we take all that information and we use that to plan some of the upcoming projects for the, the year. Um, we try to do that before budget time. Um, so the minutes are attached from this meeting. Um, it occurred on October 27th of 2021. It has all the staff that were um, in attendance. And then I guess the only thing I probably mentioned is on the second page, um, we talk about the um, long-term forecast of, for major infrastructure maintenance, rehabilitation, and renewal activities. Um, so it's kind of outlined in a chart from 2022 to 2031. Um, these aren't set in stone. I realize you're not seeing them on the screen right now. However, for 2022, we had Atward Reservoir uh, going in for firefighting, and that's been completed. We just started the water meter replacement program. It's just gone out to tender. And um, we'll also be uh, doing some work towards the Atwood Water Main on Main Street. So uh, that's the minutes uh, that are included for the report. If there were any questions, I'd be willing to take them. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. Uh, through a report, as always, um, Council, any questions or first comments on this? All right, I'm not seeing any. Uh, so I have a resolution for consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the DWQMS Infrastructure Review Report and the attached Infrastructure Review Meeting Minutes dated October 27th, 2021 as information. Councillor Rothwell, serve as our mover for this one. Yes, I so move. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll be the seconder. Thank you. Any discussion or debate questions? Anything further? Uh, let's have that vote. And that's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 6.6.2 invites council to receive the current North Perth Water Systems Operational Plan and a set of management review minutes for information. Uh, Mr. Hackett, uh, again, has the opportunity to speak to this. So Mr. Hackett. Yes, so the management review is another um, meeting that we do every year, um, and it's required by the DWQMS. Um, also, we're required to provide a current copy of the um, operational plan, and I believe that was sent out to all council by email, so you have it, um, so you can have a look. It's a rather large document to include um, in the council package. Um, so, as I said, the top management has identified an operational plan, uh, met with myself. I'm, uh, I have the role of the DWQMS representative, and we go over, um, we evaluate the suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness of the quality management system. Um, we review such things as uh, the internal and external audit results, the any compliance inspection reports by the MECP, flow data trends, raw water quality, uh, other water quality reports and maintenance, record, maintenance records are reviewed. The meeting was on, and the minutes are attached on March 24th, 2022. Um, each of the 16 items are things that we are required to review. Some of them seem kind of odd maybe, but uh, I don't really have anything to pull out uh, for council's information. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Mr. Council, any uh, questions or first comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any evidence of that, so uh, let's have a look at the uh, resolution that's uh, been proposed. Uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth receive the attached management review meeting minutes dated March 24th, 2022, and the current North Perth Water Systems Operational Plan as information. Councillor Andreessen, can I call on you to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Anstett, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Other questions? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And 
that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hackett, your team, as always, for your incredible service. All right, let's move forward then to item 5.7, 5 5 6.7. See, we got me thrown off, you know? That's good. Uh, we're going to turn to item 6.7, reports from our manager of operations. For item 6.7.1, on the recommendation of our drainage superintendent, council was asked to proceed with a request for improvement to the Partridge Municipal Drain and to appoint an engineer per a section 78 request. I'm going to invite Scott Richardson, our drainage superintendent, to address this one. Mr. Richardson, welcome. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mayor and, and Council. Yeah, the, the purpose of this report is uh, just for a, an improvement under Section 78. Um, the drain serves uh, Lot 22-25 at Concession 17 in the, in the Elm Award. Uh, the last report for the, the Partridge number two was in 1967. It was prepared by James A. Howes, which was an Ontario land surveyor under bylaw 929. Um, the request was received on April the 13th uh, from Ed Tolner, owner of uh, Toll Acres. Uh, Mr. Tolner has expressed interest in, um, in closing a portion of the uh, open drain uh, that crosses the half um, east half of lot 23 and all of 24 to improve his farming practices. Uh, the pro proposed enclosure is approximately 930 meters in length. The watershed uh, 76 hectares or 190 acres in size. Uh, the top end of the drain was abandoned previously um, at west half of 23 um, under bylaw 121-2017. Uh, the abandoned portion of the partridge number two has since been filled in and a private tile drain has been installed uh, when this project proceeds or if it proceeds, a pri the private tile will be connected to the new partridge tile system that's proposed. Um, as far as the finances on this, the implications, um, toll, toll, toll acres will be assessed the entire cost of the project and it won't be eligible for a one third grant because um, the enclosure of an existing uh, municipal drain, like an open municipal drain, and the municipality won't have any financial responsibility towards this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Um, questions or first comments from council? Okay, we're not seeing any. So I have a resolution for our consideration council that uh, reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth in accordance with section 78 of the Drainage Act proceed with the request for improvement of the Partridge Number Two Municipal Drain and that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth in accordance with section eight, subsection two of Point Street Associates to investigate the possible improvements to the Partridge Number Two Municipal Drain. Councilor Barrens, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, that allows us to turn to, thanks, Mr. Richardson, as always. You've been a busy guy the last couple of years. My goodness, uh, keeping us on our toes. Uh, we turn now to item 6.8, reports from the fire department. Uh, item 6.8.1 invites council to approve an updated draft for input from council at a previous meeting of a bylaw oh. to regulate open air burning in the municipality of North Perth. I'm happy to invite North Perth Fire Chief Jenny Pape to comment. Welcome, Chief Pape. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, and good evening, Council. Um, as you're aware, the open air burning bylaw was presented to Council in February, and there was some feedback received um, that included um, requests for revisions um, for more plain language. I have incorporated the feedback uh, from Council into um, the proposed bylaw and then further revisions were circulated to council this afternoon for consideration. I welcome your questions and comments. Thank you, uh, Chief Pape. Um, council questions or comments? Uh, let's turn first to Mr. Andreessen. 
Thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, hi, Chief Pape. I, um, I might have missed this in the notes from um, the messages today, but um, I just have a question of clarification. In this, um, you know, in, in this information that you're proposing at this time, I was wondering if we were going to put timing on um, when the burns could happen or if that was um, not going to be put in this. If you could just uh, update on me on that, because I'm forgetful of where we're going with that. Thank you. Sure. Um, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, daytime hours are when fires can be lit um, in the rural wards, and it's a little more specific when they have a, per a burn permit, whereas in the more urban wards, um, you're able to have a campfire um, during the evening hours. But the larger fires um, that occur in um, in the rural wards requiring a burn permit are to only be started um, in the morning during um, daylight and must be extinguished um, before nightfall. Any other questions or first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any. Uh, Council, just so that you know, because there was a, a revision to the text of the bylaw circulated today after the deadline for council package uh, last week, uh, the bylaw resolution will read as amended to reflect the content that was circulated today to council, um, which represented a few uh, minor adjustments. Um, if you have any concerns about what those minor adjustments are, then uh, you should surface those at this point, I think, and, and Chief Pip can assist us with answering questions. Anyone wanna have any questions about the revisions that were circulated today? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So I have a resolution for our consideration. As I said, it reads as follows. File 37-2022 as amended being a bylaw to regulate open air burning within the municipality of North Perth. Be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Deputy Mayor Kellum, can I call on you to be our mover for this one? Yes, thank you for the amendments and I will make that motion. Thank you, and Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our second mover? Yes, I would second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, uh, except appreciation for Chief Pate for her work on this one. Uh, so uh, let's have that vote. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Uh, Chief Pape, thank you for hanging in there through uh, thick and thin on uh, the work that was needed to get to, to this state. And uh, we look forward to the educational campaign that you will mount to help others understand uh, the, the, the new provisions that we have just enacted. Uh, that allows us then to uh, move on to section uh, or item seven on our agenda. This is uh, Council reports. Um, for item 7.1, councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of committees? The usual process of drawing the chair's attention applies. Okay, we're not seeing anything there. Oh, we are seeing something there. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andreessen. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I just have some curiosity around um, having a report being presented around the possibility of doing a hybrid council meeting where council members could by choice perhaps be um, joining council from home or by choice joining council in the chambers. I understand that it will require a great deal of IT um, support and I'm wondering if perhaps IT might have to be part of that report. I'm just curious to see if that's a possibility um, you know, in the months ahead as we, you know, move through the sixth wave and uh, see if that's something that as a council we could um, be able to adopt more of a, 
um, an in-person and a hybrid model at the same time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Um, at the last council meeting, which I think you were absent for, a motion was passed to that effect uh, to evaluate uh, council reconvening in face-to-face -face settings. Um, there is a report that will be prepared by staff in due course uh, to address that issue. Uh, so uh, just hang on, it's coming. Um, there, there will be some information about this and uh, certainly uh, IT will be appropriately consulted in terms of uh, uh, making sure that our technology is sufficient and um, and certainly we want to continue to respect the, the advice from the Medical Officer of Health around uh, um, indoor uh, gatherings. Uh, she continues to assert that we need to be wearing masks in indoor spaces. So um, uh, anyway, that's advice. It's not mandatory, but uh, I think that uh, we've followed that advice all along. We'll see that probably should be this well. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Councillor Seiler, you're next. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, just I don't know if Lyndon is with us tonight. I had brought up uh, a while back about the uh, lighting in Britain, and I just was wondering where that report was, or if, or if he's talked to the county, or where it stands as of now. If you could uh, give me some information on that, thank you. Uh, Mr. Couch isn't with us tonight, as I understand it. At least that's what the clerk has advised. So uh, we will convey um, your curiosity to Mr. Couch to follow up on the report that's been requested and we'll see what the timeline is for that. Thank you for keeping us uh, informed of, of that need, uh, Councillor Seiler. Anyone else looking for reports? Okay, let's move to uh, item eight. We have received no items of uh, correspondence uh, that require council action at this point. That brings us to item nine on our agenda, which allows council to consider bylaws. We have a few of these tonight. So uh, let's get our way through them. Um, as item 9.1, council is invited to approve a bylaw, which will provide for a drainage works, namely the realignment of the Logan Maitland municipal drain. Uh, Councillors, any of you have questions on this one? We're not seeing that, so I have a resolution for our consideration that bylaw number 3-2022 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works, the Logan Maitland Municipal Drain be introduced, read, and considered read a third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Rothwell, can you serve as our mover here? Yes, I will. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler will be our seconder. I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Next up is item 9.2. Uh, this is another bylaw related to drainage. Uh, Council was invited to approve the bylaw which will provide for a drainage works, namely the Hamilton drain and the green drain. Anyone have questions on this one? All right, then the resolution is as follows. Bylaw number 4-2022 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works. Hamilton and green municipal drain be introduced red and considered red a third time and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Andreessen, can you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anstead, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that, thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that one? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Uh, item 9.3, <clears throat> also uh, related to, uh, uh, this one is related to our appointments bylaw and uh, proposes to clean up our appointments, including uh, adding a new member to one committee and removing a member from another due to a resignation. Any questions on this one, Council? 
So the resolution is as follows, of bylaw number 63-2022 being a bylaw to amend the North Perth Boards and Committee's appointment bylaw be introduced, read, and considered read a third time. First, second, and third, yeah, I looked at the clerk, sorry. Be, uh, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time. We need those all in there. Uh, and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Barons, will you serve as our mover here? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll sign that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate here? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Now that brings us down to item number 10. Uh, the opportunity for councillors is there to uh, give notice of motion this evening. Anyone wishing leave to do so? Okay, we're not seeing any evidence of that. That brings us to item 11 on our agenda. Uh, for item 11.1, are there any announcements that would be a benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Again, if you'd like the floor, please draw the attention through the text chat function. So Deputy Mayor Kellum has spilled the beans here. Apparently it is a uh, happy birthday time for Councillor Seiler. Uh, last attempt that I made to sing with Councillor Rothwell um, just led to a, a cacophony because we couldn't get our timing right across Zoom. So uh, perhaps, uh, Terry, I'll do the singing and Alan, you can hit him up the next time you see him, all right? Uh, so happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Terry. Happy birthday to you and many more. All right, thank you, uh, Alan. When you see Terry, you know you owe him one, right? Uh, thumbs up. Sounds good. There we go. I don't recognize him right now. All he's got on his on his chin. I haven't seen him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll sort that out soon enough. All right. Uh, uh, any other announcements that we need to make tonight to the councilors or staff, which to draw to our attention? Okay. Um, as council knows, it is my pleasure to announce that the municipality has been the recipient of a grant from the Skills Development Fund under the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development for the province of Ontario for more than $1.8 million to launch the North Perth uh, Technology and Skills Learning Hub. We are looking forward to seeing a significant impact made on the skilling, reskilling and upskilling of our adult workforce with emphasis on trades and managerial and leadership training. A lot of work went on behind the scenes to secure this amazing grant and a flurry of effort is now launched, really a flurry, to get things in place for a rapid launch of learning offerings with hopes that we have our first programs being offered in June. Um, I think that was a piece of very good news for our community. All right, now to item 12 on our agenda. We have no matters for consideration in a closed session meeting of council tonight. Uh, that means that for item 13, we can skip on by because we have nothing to report back to uh, our community. Council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have the draft for confirmatory bylaw number 66, that's 2022, which reads as follows, that bylaw number 66-2022 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Johnston, can I call on you to be our mover for this one? It certainly would move that. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder for this? One? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate on this bylaw pr proposition? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And 
And that is carried. Thank you. Noting the abstentions, of course. And that means that we've come to the end of the proposed agenda, uh, the moment that we call adjournment. Councillors, we have completed the deliberation and taken action on the business that did come before us tonight. I have a motion to adjourn that reads as follows, that the council meeting adjourns at 8.50 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, May 2nd, 2022 at 7 p.m. Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, birthday boy, will you be our second? Sure will. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's not debatable, so let's have that vote. And that is carried unanimously. This council will meet again for our next regular meeting, again using digital technologies on Monday, May 2nd, 2022. This meeting is now adjourned. Council? Good meeting and good night.